Hey everybody, it's Felisa. It is a beautiful, great day in my neighborhood. It is, it was 28 degrees when I got on the freeway. Now it's 31. Um, this is going to be a, a entry into Vlogmas and it's probably going to be a, a story time of sorts. Although this is not the usual environment that I like to do a story time in. But I did want to get this out. Um, because this memory has bubbled up twice now and I feel like, you know, perhaps it will help someone. Um, I do want to give a disclaimer, you know, these are my, my experiences, not even my thoughts. These are my experiences that will eventually run into my thoughts. Um, and it, it really is my perspective because of things that I have gone through and lived through. Um, and it's just designed for information. I hope that you guys will learn some of the things that I have endured and be better for it. Anyway, here we go. So I was about 10 when my mother remarried. This was like 79. And um, I want to acknowledge ahead of time that, you know, it was a different time. It was a different world then. There was a different standard in terms of raising children. Um, there wasn't all of the paranoia, you know, hovering that we have now. Um, so I don't want this to come across as if, you know, my mother or whatever other adult in my life was to blank, except for the one person that deserves blank. And that will become very clear. Um, so, like I said, when I was about 10, my mother remarried, and she married a man who wasn't um, particularly fond of, I don't know if he wasn't fond of me or if he just was not fond of children, period. He did not have children of his own. Um, he was kind of withdrawn and, and sullen to me, um, and I didn't know him at all prior to my mother marrying him. I don't even recall like being introduced to him. Really, that could just be a repressed memory, child. I don't know. Anyway, um, I do recall the time when we were at church. My mom met her at church, and um, we used to have a, like an overflow room in the back of the Baptist. There was an overflow room in the back, and so at the end of every service, the deacons would collect all the Bibles and stack them in the overflow room on the shelf. Anybody who needed a Bible could go and get one. And so I remember one day after service, after Bible study, I believe, um, his Bible disappeared. His name was Lee. His Bible disappeared and, you know, he was looking all over for it, couldn't find it. And so he was really upset about it. And so I thought, you know, it would be a great thing if I went and found his Bible. Maybe that would help him like me. And so... I went through all of the Bibles in the overflow room on the shelf, um, and his name was written in the front of, of the Bible. So I ran out and, you know, gave it to him. I was all excited and I expected, you know, like, out of girls and accolades, and he literally accused me of stealing his Bible and hiding it. I think that that was one of the most devastating things for me and while it sounds like it's a very small thing it led to bigger issues i have always had an issue with not being believed since that that since that like that that was something that was just draw dropping to me i wasn't a, a, a kid that lied i was a kid that fantasized but when it came to necessary things I, I wasn't a liar and so to be accused of something that I did not do and then be accused of lying about it was just devastating to me. Then a little bit down the road, a couple of years down the road, my, my mom and him had been married um, and he was a smoker. Well, he was a smoker when she married him but he was a smoker and that was back in the day when you could send children to the store to get cigarettes and um, he sent me to the store, and while I was coming out the house, there was this guy that was walking down the street, like yelling, and like just really, you could tell that there was something wrong with him. So, you know, little girl me was like, yeah, don't go outside. I really believe that that was my angels and the Holy Spirit protecting me from that nonsense because he had a knife and he was throwing it into this tree. Like he was throwing it at trees and stuff like target practice. It was insane. So I was scared. So I waited a little bit. I thought that I was gonna get in trouble if I didn't go to the store. So I waited until I didn't see him anymore. And so I left out to go to the store. Well, I got to the second block. I, I, we lived like two or three houses off the corner. So I left, crossed that street, and then I needed to walk like a longer block 
in order to get to the store. So I get like partially down the next block. This guy pops out of nowhere, comes running over to the, oh, running across the street over to me, grabs me by my, my sweater, beats the crap out of me, yelling, is she watching me? Did she send you? Who are you? Like just literally, today I know that this guy probably a paranoid schizophrenic either that or he was high on drugs but to little girl me i was petrified i wore glasses at that time this man slapped me so hard he slapped my glasses off snatched my sweater off threw it um on the the, the lawn i found that out later i didn't know what happened to it and literally like shoved me back home so I go in the house, I'm sure I'm disheveled, I'm hysterical, I'm crying. You know, I run, I find my stepfather, I tell him what happened. And he told me that I was lying and I stole his money to try to buy candy with it. So now I'm just like, I'm, I'm lost. Like I'm just so lost. So he puts me in, you know, he's like, okay, well we gonna go find, but he was skeptical about it puts me in his van, we circle the block. Um, I can't remember how now, but we, I, I think that we were walking because my glasses were gone. And now, you know, now that I think about it, I'm like, what did he think that I would deal with my glasses and my sweater? Like, seriously. Anyway, so I um, went to, well, we walked down the block together. And a neighbor came out of the house, she saw me, came out of the house, and told him what happened. She watched the whole thing. Watch the whole thing, y'all. To this day, I don't understand why that woman did not feel the need to help me. Um, you know, maybe it was a situation of, you know, I don't want to get involved. That's not my, you know, that's not none of my business, you know, blah, blah, blah. But literally, I was a little girl being manhandled by this grown behind man in a way that no child should be, no child should be um, physically uh, attacked. And so... Anyway, you know, that, that kind of set up this chain of motion reaction for me because it was such a hard pill to swallow. It was such a difficult um, situation until I, it, I don't know that I've ever recovered from that, y'all. I really don't. Like, I don't know if I've ever recovered from that. I know that when I raised my children, it was sincerely like my mission to make sure that they always felt like somebody believed them. Like even when I knew the stories was far-fetched, I gave them the benefit of the doubt because of that. And you know, the reason that I'm telling this story time is because, you know, and I know that it's not my usual, you know, fun and game story time, but the reason that I'm telling it is because when I when I answered that question, I really thought about how um, we only get one chance at this parenting thing. We only get one pass at, you know, really helping our, our children grow into the best version of themselves. And, you know, what happened to me left me a nervous wreck, a, a nervous wreck and just obsessed with being believed and having a visceral reaction when someone felt like I was being dishonest or, you know, wasn't telling the whole truth. Like that, that still bothers me because I'm not a liar. And so, you know, if I could say anything to parents, you know, the protection and the care of your children is crucial. It's vital to their well-being and to who they are. You get one chance at it. Like you really get one chance at it. Um, if your child comes to you and tells you whatever, even if you think it's far-fetched, you owe it to them to investigate to you know to to at least give them the the innocent and self-proven guilty um kind of position that any offender would get in our court system because if you don't you can never repair that harm you can never you can never repair that damage you really can't you know i've heard stories of children who have tried to tell their parents that they're being violated that something happened to them that you know that they have been involved in certain things and parents don't believe them and i never could figure that out like i really never could figure that out how is it you know and i know that parents know their children but even with that you know you investigate that 
humor them investigate that and if it proves to be false so be it no harm no foul but if it proves to be true then you owe it to step up and protect your children and side with them and navigate them through whatever life event that is so that they don't become shell shocked and they don't become paralyzed in that embryonic stage because literally when you inflict trauma on a child in that space they literally stop growing they li they literally stop growing like they are frozen in time there and it becomes such a dysfunctional part of who they are i'm not saying that the whole person is dysfunctional you know there are certain parts of me that have been dysfunctional it hasn't been the full measure of adulthood that i would like and i have had to struggle and acknowledge that i need healing in those areas in order to get to some semblance of wholeness so yeah i want to come out and say that because i think that it's important you know y'all take it for what you you know for what you want but you know you need to start the the investment in home and in your children all adults don't tell the truth some adults do have nefarious intent some things do happen to our children that cause them trauma and pain and they need to be able to come if they can't get to go to nobody else they need to be able to go to you period and they don't need to be questioned like it's the gestapo like yeah no anyway i'm felisa leave your comments below let me know what you think and i'll talk to y'all later bye